Great, we have a board with 40 capacitors. Next is to get the power circuitry on the board. So this is step two in the assembly manual. What we're going to need are the USB connector. In our design the USB connector only applies power. So it's not used for data transfer. We need a Zeno diode. So there's a lot of small diodes that are translucent or a bit red. And there's one big one, the black one, that's the Zener. A multifuse, the round thing. A big capacitor. The supervisory circuit, which looks like a transistor. One of the five LEDs. Let's get it out. One LED and one resistor, the red, red, red one. So we're going to solder in these. First of all, we're going to do the USB connector. And this is a part that has really small pins. Well, actually, it has two big pins, but they are only there to keep the connector sturdy in place because there's physical power coming on the, onto the connector and there is five small pins that go through the board. So here we cannot uh, bend pins to keep it in place so this takes a little bit of fiddling around to get it in the correct place. Let's see if it will just sit here now. One way of doing this with one hand, well you could use a special tool to hold stuff in place, but you could also just have the solder bend it so it is a little bit in place. While you want it, take the soldering iron and first I'm going to solder the big connector. Again, be careful because this is all metal. So if you touch it with your finger, it will get hot. So this one connection is already enough to keep it in place. So now I'm going to solder the other one. Double check that it is to my liking. Yes. Do the first one again. And now the two actual pins, pins that we use. The connector has five pins, but we use only two the power pins. So they're pretty small but having done 40 capacitors I'm sure you will be able to get those soldered correctly. So that's the plug. Um, let's see what's next. The Zeno diode. And again all the components are clearly marked here in the assembly manual you'll see that this is D1, diode 1. And we see a picture here of diode 1. Now for diode 1 that's the first component that really it matters which direction we put it on the board. You can see on the board there's a marking and on the diode there's a white stripe. So these have to correspond to each other. So it does matter in which position I solder it. Now it doesn't fit right away, I need to bend the wires. So what I do is I use my fingernail just a millimeter out of, uh, from the end and make a sharp cut and the other way as well. Make sure that they go both to the same direction and it's not really that critical because if you insert it you just wiggle it a little bit so it fits the board. Again I will bend the pins so it will stay put and it's easier for me to solder in. These pins connect to a lot of metal and it's a big component so it takes a little bit more time to get the, the amount of heat that we need into the solder. The cut of the excess wire, double check, correct position, yes I'm happy with that. 
and we move on to the next. So we have the MCP, uh, which goes, uh, where does it go? Over here, the multifuse. So the multifuse has a bend in, in the pins, which keeps it from going all the way in. That's perfectly fine. Now it's a little bit bent, so what I do is I'll reheat both pins and push it in the correct position. I'm happy with this. Solder joints look well. The big capacitor, again, there's a plus side and a minus side. There's a big band here, golden colored band with a big minus sign. And there's a big white half on the printed circuit board. The other half says plus. So the plus is not marked here, but there's a side mark minus. So that indicates how the capacitor should be soldered in. Now what I like to do is just apply a tiny bit of solder on one pin and then reheat and push the capacitor to the correct position. So this sits flat on the PCB. I solder the second pin and just to be sure because I've pushed it in I do the first one again. Now the, multi uh, the supervisory circuit is over here. Again, orientation matters. So there is a flat side printed which should match the flat side of the component. Now here we see this is the only component where the um, spacing between the pins does not exactly match the spacing on the PCB. So we need to fiddle around a little bit to get all the pins in and we should not push the component all the way in because that would bend the pins too much so it is fine if it just sits like this. And there's an LED, so it's marked power OK, and you will see on the board that there is a plus and a minus. The long pin goes into the plus, and the short pin is the other one. So this can go all the way in until it stops. Again, I repeat the trick of using just a tiny amount of solder and then use my finger to make sure that it is positioned exactly the way I like it. So now it looks to be pretty straight onto the board. I mean it's not really necessary electronically speaking but I like my board to look nice. So I do the other pin and I redo the first pin. And lastly we have a resistor, so again I use my fingernails to bend it. And this resistor is, I have to check, resistor R3 and R3 
Where is it? R3 is over here next to the LED. It's make sure it's flat on the board. Looks good. So all the components for the power circuit here are in. All the solder joints look good. I have all the components the correct way around. So that should complete, complete the soldering. Now we can check to see if this is actually working. And for this we need the provided USB cable. So as I said, the USB cable is only used for power. The board uses so little power that almost any apparatus providing a USB voltage can power up the system. For this, we are going to use a power bank, but you could also use uh, a PC or anything else. So hook it up, and we see that the power OK LED LED is on. So the power circuitry is working. Great. Next step is to build the clock circuit. 